when there's grass growing on the road, you know that you shouldn't be on it. What does that sign say? That's a little bit tight, Maria. How stable is that gonna be? I think those warning signs in Japanese were like very small road ahead. For the past few years, we've been attempting to drive our old camper van Trudy around the world. After driving 51,000 miles across 19 countries, we've seen many amazing locations, eaten delicious foods, and a few not so delicious foods. Uh, Kokoresh is sheep's intestines. And met the most wonderful people. Don't get me wrong, it hasn't all been easy. It's actually welded itself to that. Okay. We've spent more than our fair share of time in garages. In fact, there's been times when we've literally spent weeks parked up waiting for parts to be shipped from Europe. I think it's day 10. But one of the biggest challenges we found in Japan is the language barrier. England. England. Oh, this, this England. 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 If you run into a wall, don't turn around and give up. Figure out how to climb it, go through it, or work around it. Michael Jordan. We've still got this one package we haven't opened from Ryan. Oh, coolio. They seem to be some kind of like translator earbuds. Cool, that could be handy. Talk French to me, Marianne. Parce que tu m'aimes avec tout ton cœur, j'ai vraiment envie d'aller au magasin et dépenser beaucoup d'argent. That can't be right. Non, non, je rigole. En fait, on a besoin d'y aller acheter des pneus aujourd'hui. No, no, I'm actually kidding. We need to go buy some tires today. It's going to come in handy while we're trying to explain our tyre situation to a Japanese mechanic. Let's go put them to the test. Okay, should be just down here on the left. This RV shop was recommended to us by one of our followers who said that they were able to get tyres for bigger, heavier vehicles and said if anyone can find us new tyres, they can. Yes. There is motorhomes, lots of motorhomes. Oh, it's a big place. That's very cool. So we'll just park here. We're actually a bit early. Uh, the shop doesn't open for about 15 minutes, but uh, we'll just loiter. So what's funny, Marianne was just talking about the matrix and then here we are, we've rocked up behind this van and what does it say matrix. matrix and it's an adria conversion which is the same as trudy there's definitely a lot of coincidences happening in today's video this is the biggest van motorhome we've seen in japan and then this is the smallest i'm actually taller than the motorhome look at the size of that isn't that just great that is amazing we could go around the world in one of those, love. Maybe that's the next adventure. Let's drive Africa in a Japanese mini motorhome. I think if it broke down, you'd just be able to like lift it onto the jack, wouldn't you? Hasn't got much clearance for Africa. Yeah, that's true. Oh, I love the porthole window. That yeah, that's a cool design. It's very small. Let's have a look. Can we see in the back window? Oh yeah, they've got a little table and the whole thing would turn into a bed and a little kitchen. It's a bit like... And the roof pops up. It's a bit like um, JB, Julia's van. It's a praying mantis on the side of the RV, look. Morning, mate. Just trying to blend in. <laughs> That's the first mantis we've seen. It is. See, what we like about our tyres, these are the, the cross-climate tyres, is you get all of this really good support on the side of the uh, on the side of the tire which is great if you're going through rocks and stuff and these are the tires that you get over here they've got 
some support, but that's not fully protected like the ones that we have. It wasn't long until the owner arrived and started inspecting our tires. Marianne handed him one of the Time Kettle translation earbuds and explained if he talked normally, it would translate for her. Watching the two of them talk and understand each other, I was absolutely blown away at the technology of these Time Kettle translation earbuds. A game changer for us being able to communicate on the road. He spent time researching online to see what he could find us. I think so. I thought so. Oh, they don't, they don't do, they don't do the same size. They do the 15 inch tires, but not, not that fit those rims. Not the, the width of the, the wheel, our wheel. Uh. He explained that the only 15 inch tires that he could find that fitted our van would be summer tires and only for use on paved roads. So we have to stay on the road. Yeah, that's a problem. Looking back at the adventure so far and the type of roads that we've driven on, there's no way that these tires would work for us. So it looks like we're gonna have to try again in our next country. Luckily, we don't need to change them urgently. They're very cool. Time get or translator earbuds. The model is WT2 Edge. And if you want to grab yourself a pair or check out more information, I'll put a link in the description below. After ordering parts for Trudy's side door from Europe, we met up with Ryan. And after a few complications... Love, I think it's the lock. No. We finally fixed it. And we're pleased to say that it's working fine. Okay, so after fixing the door yesterday, we hung out with these guys and uh, Aikiko <laughs> has come uh, up to join us for the weekend. And Yumiko, oh, yeah. <laughs> another friend. And today we've driven uh, to a nearby uh, village to go to a sake brewery. So I'm very excited about that. First time. I don't think you're alone at being excited. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just walking down and we've seen these yellow flags by this crossing and we've been wondering we think these are for kids what are they for yeah so when yeah. when you're going across the road so you take this you can hold it up to cross the road when you cross the road <laughs> then you deposit it on the other side yeah oh it's just highlighting the fact you're crossing because there's no official crossing or the adults will stop at the after school and they'll hold it up to stop so the kids can cross safely oh they are for kids crossing i love that that's a very good idea <laughs> that's so cool oh, look i just love these houses check out this japanese garden here can you imagine how long it takes to look after that tree they got the little water fountain there and the stone sculpture there look at that yeah chris's dad is actually really interested in japanese gardens so there you go <laughs> there's chris's one dad. there's one for you there's one for you i expect to see that next time i come round to yours <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we met up with these other guys, Roy and Amy, Hello. also other crazy YouTubers. <laughs> and uh, this is a sake place, right? Yes, one of the oldest ones actually, in 1700s. If you look at the outside of it, you think it's just a regular sh shop. You just kind of look at it, you're gonna go inside, maybe buy a few bottle bottles. But then as you get inside, you realize how deep it goes and how deep the brewery is. It's amazing, it's a really cool place. Well, you come in, it is literally like a TARDIS. It just opens up and um, it goes all the way back. Look how big it is. Sake, also known as Japanese rice wine, is brewed from fermented rice. Nobody really knows when Japan started making sake, but it's believed that an alcoholic beverage was made from rice way back around 300 BC, when rice cultivation was brought from China to Japan. You can see all the sake barrels right there. And they've got the old uh, the line, like it's a bit like a train line in the middle for moving the barrels because they're so heavy. Um, this is where they used to store uh, the barrels and stuff in it. If you go inside, you can feel how cool it is. It's, the temperature is totally different. Although nowadays... So this is the uh, the storeroom. Look, it looks like one ginormous, humongous walk-in fridge. Shishiken is one of 1,800 sake breweries across Japan. Its founder started brewing sake way back in 1750. 
It wouldn't be right unless we actually tried a bit of sake if we come to a sake place. Ryan asked the lady which one she would recommend trying. Before we knew it, two samples were being poured and Roy and I took on the hard task of sampling the sake. Cheers. It's a really smooth taste. So apparently this one, the sparkling one, was served at the G7 Summit here in Japan recently. Sparkling time for us powerful world leaders. Come by. Bye bye. Do you want to taste them actually? Mm. That's really nice too. I could get stuck on this. Actually, it tastes like it. champagne. Does no. it? Like a, like a brew, like a dry yeah. there's a, there's a There's a champagne taste yeah. to that. After, we headed down the street as there was a local speciality that they wanted us to try. What is it? It looks like a jelly ball. Manju. Especially from this area. Yeah, it's summer. Oh, I <laughs> so apparently, oh, when you put it in the sun, look, this is what it looks like. It's very beautiful, wobbly. <laughs> it's wobbles. So apparently you have to eat it in like 30 minutes, otherwise it starts like collapsing the shape of it. So we're gonna we're gonna get tucked in. So this is apparently made mostly of water. 99%. 99%. And it looks like a it's just so strange. Okay. But it comes with instructions on how to eat it and how to prepare it. And what is this called? Mizushinge mochi. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've got I've got water. I've got that. Okay. I may not be able to tell you what it's called again but time to follow those instructions. Step one, sprinkle with unknown topping. Step two, cover with the sweet Japanese molasses. It's just the <laughs> weirdest texture Look ever. Wobble. I've never seen, actually I have. <laughs> wobble, I, I've never seen a wobble quite like that. Okay, we just, look at that. <laughs> It tastes like jelly. I would say it's the consistency of like slightly softer jelly from back home. The molasses is sweet and the powder gives it... It's a bit like dried and it's like ground nuts almost. It's actually good. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's good. Okay, we've managed to find a Chinese tour company. They've confirmed a few details to us. Firstly, there is actually a ferry that runs from South Korea to China. To drive across China, we would need to put a Chinese number plate on our van, get a Chinese temporary driving license, have a Chinese guide that escorts us in Trudy for the duration of our time, and we would need to pay for the guide's accommodation. We'd also have to stick to a predetermined route that we've agreed with the agent. This isn't a cheap option, which is why most people that overland tend not to drive across China. We could lower the cost by going in a group, but most groups go from west to east. And we're going the other way. They've given us one quote to go across China to the Nepalese border. It would take 19 days and will cost 6,600 US dollars. If we wanted to add any additional days, it would be 196 US dollars a day. That covers most costs, but it wouldn't cover things like our fuel. We'd also need to pay a deposit for the van on arrival in China, and we have no idea how much that would cost. This is not a cheap option by any means, but we are trying to drive around the world, and going this way, we'd be able to do more driving. We've also heard back from our Japanese shipping agent, Kazui, who's agreed to contact the ferry line and to help us do the paperwork to get out of Japan. We're ending the day with uh, coming down to a restaurant because one thing we have to do in Japan is go to eat sushi. So we're going with uh, Ryan, Aikiko and, and their friends to a beautiful sushi restaurant. Yumiko and her husband have got the most excellent tasting cars. <laughs> they have. It's a mini. 
Uh, the colour matches your top. Yeah. Very good. And the Union Jack flag there. Yeah, they got the Union Jack flag yes. here. <laughs> you choose it. You have good taste. Entering this traditional restaurant, I thought how lucky we were to be able to experience our first sushi restaurant with locals. The menu. Okay, I need a bit of help. Yeah, you can order like a set like these, uh, like a course that has like a bunch of different ones inside of it. Okay. Um, or you can individu individually, individually ones, and they're different prices. So average 400, 500 yen. Marianne doesn't eat fish. No, but the good news is they have vegetarian ones. Mmm. Yay! Kanpai! Also in Japanese we say Oskari sama. Oh, Oskari sama. Oskari Means after hard day's work, Oskari sama means like, good job, let's relax. Yeah. A couple of dishes came to have with our beer. Let's try a little bit of this. Fresh I don't know what that is, but it tastes good. It was actually a selection of different pickled daikon. Okay, this one is fried fish. We got some corn tempura. Yeah, corn tempura, and it's got a dipping sauce in here. Uh, it tastes really good. The corn, because it's fried, it gets sweet. The sugars come out. It's great. That's really good. Sweet. It's slightly sweet. With you can taste the whole lumps of like corn inside, but it's really crispy on the outside and. Uh, Slightly sweet, slightly salty dipping sauce. The restaurant had an open kitchen, so I took advantage of heading over to watch the chef prepare some of the sushi. It was absolutely mesmerizing to watch. I'm sure it wasn't as easy as he made it look. Oh my goodness, look at that. Okay, so for all of you that don't eat fish, it's okay because these are all vegetarian. There's like... Cucumber, avocado, and campio, which is a like a vegetable that we don't really know how to explain. But Marianne's going to give it a go. Translator: Campio is the gourd family, and it's um, dried and marinated, and then put in a sushi. Ah, uh, it's, it's like a squash. So I think I'm going to go for a cucumber one because I love cucumber. First sushi in Japan, dipped in soy sauce. Do you put? The whole thing in or just the whole? whole? Mm -hmm. How big do you think my mouth is? Mmm! <laughs> 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 oh, it's a bit spicy. Yeah. I suppose it is. Oh, you got a bit of wasabi. Um, oh, right. Cucumber, rice, seaweed, and heat. We sat savoring the flavors of the vegetarian sushi. But I wanted to try some of the famous fish ones. Oh, we got. Oh, arigato. Okay, the sushi has arrived. The fish sushi. What do we got? Um, okay, this is tuna, but it's kind of ground up. The next one we have over here is uh, saltwater eel, because freshwater is called unagi. This is not unagi. Um, anago, uh, which is a um, would be a saltwater eel. Uh, then we have. Um, Tuna, it's tuna, it's a, but it's a part of the tuna that's more uh, fatty and tastes great. Uh, we have salmon, different kinds of clams, uh, shellfish, and this is a squid, and this is a boiled shrimp. I'm gonna try a prawn. Look at that, look at the, <laughs> got rice inside. It's actually a cooked prawn. Dip into the soy sauce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Happy food face. That's sushi heaven. Tomarigato. <laughs> Thank you. That was an absolutely delicious first experience of sushi here in Japan. Good morning. Yes, the side door works. 
you haven't seen us come out of there for a while since we've been in Japan, have you? But yes, the side door is still working and I cannot tell you how happy we are. <laughs> and today we have a really fabulous time lined up to share with you guys. But first, we're gonna get the map on the side of the van just to show you where, you, where we are and where we've been. I think we've traveled quite a long way in Japan already <laughs> looking at this map. I love Trudy, our adventure van. <laughs> She's game for it. So yeah, so we made it all the way down. We saw the, the snow monkeys. We met up with uh, Ryan and uh, Aikiko and tried the sake and stuff all around this region here. And this is where we've woken up this morning. Another beautiful rest stop. So today we're heading to the town of Takayama where there's a world heritage folk village in this region old markets, lovely buildings, lovely old town, hopefully some food. So I'm ready to hit the road, try and see if we can get to the, uh, the morning market. I think it's only open from seven till 12. So we better hit the road. sunny day and uh, we're up in the mountains in the forest it's absolutely stunning driving through these little villages here this morning yeah we had we had a few comments saying um, it's gonna be really tricky because Japan is so um, busy it's crowded there's no open spaces this one's for you <laughs> yeah this this is not crowded and uh, it's very, very quiet. So yeah, if you do think Japan is overcrowded and overpopulated, just get out of the cities into the countryside because it's definitely not. Just had to pull over by the side of the road just to show you how beautiful this river and the jungle is here this morning up in the mountains. Pretty wild, isn't it? I love it. And I can smell something like a fox or a... Yeah. Can you smell it? Yeah. There's something here, something wild in the wilderness. And I think I've just spotted a couple of fishermen further <laughs> down the river. Just going over this little bridge. <laughs> Look at this. This is wild. That way. Oh, look at these houses. I am loving Japan. This road is a bit small, isn't it? Turn left. Okay, I've got a feeling that these, that these roads are going to get a bit small. Are we all right? I'm just following Google Maps. I know that's sometimes a mistake. See, what does that sign say? The sign was in Japanese, and without an internet signal, we couldn't translate it. Hopefully, it wasn't telling us we should turn around now whilst we still have the chance. Well, according to the map, we've got 30 kilometers down this road, so it might be a little bit slower than we planned. This is really small. Do you think all these signs are warning us not to come down it? We've been, we've been on worse. We've I was, worse. I was going to say, we've been on a lot worse roads. Well, it's definitely the wilderness here, isn't it? <laughs> Love to know what these signs say. It must be caution, rocks falling. Yeah, I think it's rocks falling. It's been crazy. This is a wild road. Look at this. This is the maddest road we've been on in Japan, isn't it? It's very, very up there. <laughs> I'm not sure if a car meets us the other way. It's a problem sometimes with Google, you can't see the size of the road in, uh, in some places or they haven't been mapped out. 
so you just have to trust it and just go with it but it is a beautiful drive this morning normally i say when there's grass growing on the road you know that you shouldn't be on it <laughs> these little huts in the forest i feel like there's a bear gonna be oh my god that's a little bit tight maria that is Those warning signs in Japanese were like very small road ahead. Yeah. I think. Let's try and turn around. You remember the roads in Georgia, right? Yeah, I'm not going to say I liked them. No, I know, but these roads are definitely better than the ones we did in Georgia. Yeah, the worry is we meet something, but I'm not sure there's many lunatics that will come down this road in a car. Maybe a motorbike. Rock signs everywhere. Yeah, looking at the map, we've still got quite a fair way to go. We're not even halfway. This is one of the most beautiful roads I've ever driven on. You don't think about the falling rocks, the sheer drops, and the narrow roads, or meeting someone, it's the best road. <laughs> Okay, so it started off going, at least we've got tarmac roads, but now they're actually more gravelly than tarmac. So that's not actually valid anymore, Marianne. I'm not going to say anymore. Yeah, you're right. Oh God, do you see the start of that hornet? Holy shit, love. No. That was, oh my God, it's coming. It's been about that long. Oh my god, we're in the jungle. <laughs> Those signs at the beginning must have been warning signs. Like, don't go <laughs> on this road unless you have life insurance or you're prepared to die. Or you're a lunatic. Or 700 people this year have died on this road. Don't go. Say that. I mean, like, what do you do if you meet someone? I mean, looking at this road, we're on the edge now, and you don't know, like, these pull-offs. How stable is that going to be? Well, you reverse until you find somewhere. Flipping that, if we have an earthquake now, we're in trouble. Why do you say that? Oh, look, the tarmac's in. <sighs> holes in the road that aren't good. Well this is wide there. Yeah, but we're we're halfway now, you might as well carry on. Oh there's men! Arigato! Arigato! <laughs> Thank you very much! Arigato! <laughs> Ohio! <laughs> Everyone's so friendly, shouting hello. How nice is that? They didn't say, turn around, you lunatic people, <laughs> which is always a good start. Looking at the road ahead, I'm not sure it's going to get any better. <laughs> the only people we've seen on this road are workmen trying to keep the road clear and strimmering it and stuff. It was a bit nerve wracking driving down this road. But as we made our way through the mountains, it made me remember some of the other roads that we'd driven down. But don't you find that the more crazy or unusual the adventure, the more you remember it. That is the Japan we've been looking for and we have found it. It's amazing. Loving these villages. The road started improving and we finally made it to the town. But I know that next time we end up on a crazy road, this will be one of those drives that I'll be remembering.